In case you missed the announcement, ChatGTP launched their 4.0 O for Omnichannel version of their AI assistant. And if you didn't see the video, I really recommend checking out OpenAI's most recent demonstration of the just search for ChatGTP 4.0 OpenAI demonstration. And you should be able to see the two AIs interacting with each other, a bunch of fancy stuff. But let's concern ourselves with what we're here for in this video. In this video, what are you going to learn? Well, you're going to see this ChatGTP 4.0 in action via connected to the API over in Bubble. So we're going to see that set up for a simple text completion. And then we are going to also send an image prompt and we'll have a scenario of imagine somebody had this nice art uh app where they're selling types of art, but they want to analyze someone's emotions and mood based upon them speaking into a video, chopping up those frames, delivering those as images into the system, identifying how this person and their emotions might be matched with art that they would enjoy. So that's what we're going to look at in this video. Stay tuned. Now this video is not intended to be a full tutorial on how to use all of the different types of API modalities that is offered by OpenAI, right? So we have code completion, we have image and video understanding, audio processing. Uh, the video is basically taking video frames though, chopping them up as images at this moment in time. We'll see what uh, OpenAI releases in the future, but I just want to make that note that if you follow along with this video and you learn the processes, there's a reason why we're doing two examples here, is that from it, you'll be able to have a process where you can just apply it to anything. So isn't that great? Okay, so let's dive into our very first thing is that we're going to do a little bit of a demonstration between ChatGTP 4.0 and ChatGTP. Please write a poem about some cute penguins. And we're gonna see these two side by side in terms of what you're getting when you upgrade the ChatGTP 4.0 versus what most people have been on, uh, at least up until you know a few weeks ago, the ChatGTP. So this one took 6.7 seconds and this one took 12.5. So almost double in terms of its ability to go faster and then uh, even a little bit less tokens. Cool. Uh, next up, we're going to grab an API key and then we are going to explore the two, the documentation for the two APIs that we'll be working with. So first to grab your API key on the bottom left hand side here, just navigate there and then just go create a new secret API key like so. Hit create, copy it, you'll get that message and then save that. We'll go over and we'll put it into the right spot in Bubble. Next, just to look at this documentation here, get yourself familiar with if you're planning on a project where you wanna use the capabilities of this chat TTP 4.0 setup. Well, here on the left-hand side are all the different uh, types of endpoints that you can connect to. We're gonna be using this text generation one and this vision one. For this vision one, we will be utilizing this here where we'll send multiple images, like I said, kind of spoofing an art app where we will upload it, it'll make sentiment analysis, and then that data could potentially be paired with pieces of art that might appeal to a person with those emotional characteristics. Now for our setup in Bubble, so just navigate, and we're gonna do this through the API connector, so I'm gonna click Add an API, and of course, you know, we'll just add a new one here and we'll see this thing fully walk through. So this will be this thing. We'll add some shared headers, but actually to make this a little quicker, the thing that you're gonna to wanna to do over on the text model here, so we have this stuff. And if you go ahead, we'll just go and we'll copy this, this curl. And you'll note on the bottom left, we have import option. And that gets us um, a whole lot quicker to the endpoint. So we've got this set up, but let's go ahead and put this in a shared header. So that way you might be able to use it for any of the API calls that you would wanna do. And then we can see here, this is where our API key goes. So we'll just add that in there. And so now your API call should be looking something like this. And then the thing that I wanna do though, is if you look at the square brackets here, 
So we'll take it from square to square and then we'll say, uh, we'll just say content and then we'll drop that in here. And if we look at what, what do we expect to get out of this? Because basically the way that it works here for the chat completions is that we are tracking kind of what's going on. So we're going to see a very simple setup of this and, um, it's talking about the world series. Where was it played? So we expect a result here as we initialize this to get a value back of where it was played. So cool. So we see what we got here. Here is our, we'll just note that we're under choices, uh, message. We have role in content. Those are the two things that we'll want to, uh, pay attention to because the role and content are what basically builds the messages as we go along. Cool. Let's see this now over in our editor. So here, basically, I just have a simple UI. There are no workflows on here yet. What do we have here? Well, we just have an input and then we have a send button. So we're going to type something in and then we're going to get this thing sent off. So if we think about what we just did there, we have this chat TTP. So there's our test one. So now we have this here. When we start off a chat, I'm going to break this down actually over in a notepad where it's going to be easier to see. So really, we actually just want when we're first kicking something off, we just want this part, right? And then we're going to dynamically insert something in. So insert here. And we'll just drop that in here. And then in this insert here spot, we will take our inputs value. And I'll also note this, that do a find and replace on this, because if you ever have a extra quotation in there, for some reason, if that gets entered in, it'll break it. So we're going to use that find and replace to a single quotation and it won't break the JSON. So that's the main chunk of our call, but let's go and actually do something with this now. So under element actions, I'm going to do set a state and we're just going to set something on here and I'll actually just create a new one here that was from a test. So we'll just say the result back. And that's going to be the result of step ones. And if we remembered our uh, JSON from when we first connected this, it's going to be the choices. We'll go with the first item. There really is only one item and it's the messages content. And then we'll just do something nice for the UI where we will reset inputs. Otherwise the text, you know, stays into, uh, stays in here. Uh, okay, so last thing to do then is I'll just drop some text in here and we'll make it display nicely. We'll, I don't know, uh, maybe, we'll, sure, why not? We'll go fixed on this one. And fix tight, we'll drop it in the middle and we'll give it the value. Of that state variable. So the, uh, the result back is what we set it to. Okay, cool. So let's see this in action and I'll just go ahead here and we'll have it run on slow so we can see that it goes out here and probably I could do the reset relevant inputs first. So it just looks like it clears out right away. There's not really any UI uh, waiting or anything like that, but we can see that we've done the job that we came to do is to test out the API so that we could send out a prompt, get a response back, and then display it here in our bubble user interface. So obviously this is just a very simple setup that we have here. And I will offer for anyone that wants to go a step further, there is available in the uh, description of this. Let's just go and add a new chat here for this one. Uh, write a poem about um, ice skating. So we can see that we add this here and we actually get a little bit nicer stuff. And as well, this is set up so that when we uh, talk back and forth with it, it's actually connected to add each of the items as a message. So if you're interested in that as a resource, uh, check out the link in the description for something that's a little bit more um, mature in terms of a configuration versus this simple thing that we're providing just in this video. Uh, and the great thing about this, I think, is that you, it's a chat interface that you can um, you can put in whatever app you're using, 
for whatever super powered backend that you have uh, behind the scenes for what's powering the the uh, AI assistant for your version of it. And then for whoever's using it, it's very normal looking chat box with a great look and feel. Okay, so let's move on from here and let's go now to the visual part of this. So here we're gonna go and perform the same thing as we go and we set up this call. So we're gonna head over to our plugins and we're going to, let's see, we'll just go import here and we'll drop that in. Okay, and we've already got this set up, so that's great. We don't need that. We'll set this as an action. And then we have all of this stuff here which I'll be honest, that one did not come in as nice, so I'm just gonna directly copy this body from here. There we go. So that looks like something more that you would be used to seeing. And in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and add an, an image. And so with three images here, I'm just gonna bring these into a dynamic uh, variable. Okay, and then like I said at the beginning of this, that we are spoofing an app that would pair based on a person's emotions as they speak through and we would be giving a lot more images than this, but we would take a bunch of frame cuts of an image where someone's describing what type of art they like. And really we're just analyzing both that message, but also the emotions and the sentiment of that person um, so that we can see, you know, we can detect if uh, they have a little bit more of a bubbly thing going on or they're kind of more chill and relaxed. Maybe their, you know, living room would look better with relaxed, uh, cool art in it or whatever. So for our instructions here, we're going to take this and we're going to say to just please analyze this image and provide the response of each image in a comma separated list of the top three emotions. So let's go ahead and initialize that. Okay. And give this another try. Okay. And so with a slight uh, format update, because it seemed like just there's a difference between the bubble API connector and what's going on. So I've just got this reformatted. Um, I will make this available on a, a URL in the description where you can just go and copy this exact same thing. So if you like this setup or you plan on using this setup, it's just right there for you. Um, I was not able to get it. I had to do some transformations on it. That's what I'm trying to say to get it to work. Okay. So with this new prompt, I think we've got it here and also double checking. I think I uh, did a save at link as versus a copy link. And one of the images was the same as another one, but we're going to give this one a go and see what we get. So it's going to return a list of three images or sorry, list of three emotions. So number one, excitement, joy, surprise. Number two, happiness, contentment, positivity. Number three, displeasure, seriousness, concentration. So if we looked at these, we could note, and you know, see if our, see if our judgment uh, agrees with the you know how how they uh, analyzed it. But okay, so now we can go to the front end where we can make a user interface that allows someone to basically, AKA, upload their video. Or their, we're we're going to kind of skirt past that and just add in a couple uploads. We're going to see this get sent off and then come back with a response where we can um, then make use of that data and you know in our fictitious application. Uh, and then we'll we'll see that happen now. For the interface here, it's already built. And one thing I just want to show off is the three states of where we'll use when we get back each of the uh, results. We're going to store them in one, two, and three, and then we're going to display those one, two, and three results back here in this text field. So we upload three images, and we don't have anything yet for workflows. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to call this one Chat GTP, and it looks like I did not do the labeling labeling so nice. But we're going to, you know, as I said, spoof um, sending a video to a API, having it chop out some frames, taking those frames, and then doing this process here for it, which these picture uploaders are just going to uh, take the place of that process. Okay, so with each of these there, we'll be ready to send this off. And what do we want to do with these? Well, we obviously we want to set the state on all these. And then this is where um, I suppose if you if you are not familiar with receiving back one response from uh, a tool like ChatGTP and then you know dividing it up. So what I have done here is I've actually I went back and modified this slightly. The results you provide is three lists. They all end with the word end. So I can see that my stuff is divided up by this word end, meaning it's ended the list that it's on. So all I need to do is take this thing and it's choices, first items, 
content, and then I'm gonna use the operator split by, we're gonna split by the word end, and here we'll grab item one, here we'll grab item two, and here we'll grab item three. Okay, so let's go and see what we've got here. And I'm purposefully not uh, clearing out the inputs. That way we can compare the images here with what shows up on the screen. So let's go ahead and see this work through, workflow walk through what it does. I think the main point here is just that the data is split up into three parts, meaning that when you have things and you're getting back stuff, that you can use operators and you can do some processing of the data in Bubble, and uh, that's basically it. If you like this kind of video, check out the one on the channel about scraping a website's content and then sending it to the Claude API. That's a fun one because the possibilities there are pretty awesome. If you like this video, give it a like, subscribe to the channel for more great tips about Bubble, and thanks for watching.